welcome everyone to this edition of Biker Angle. How you guys all doing out there? You guys uh, getting ready to come up for that 115th Harley Davidson Rally? Let me know if you are. This is 831 of 2018. And let me tell you, I am freaking recording this the night before that Biker Angle actually goes out. And what a day I had today, man. Let me tell you. Sitting here tattooing this guy. And if you guys don't know, I tattoo. I've been doing it for a long time. Anyway, big old biker, dude. Now, had to be six foot and freaking, I don't know, freaking 275 pounds. Big beard, muscle, all that shit. So, I'm sitting here. Tattooing a koi fish, because, you know, that's my specialty. I'm in the Japanese stuff, and... Yeah, god damn, was he a fucking baby. Jesus Christ, man, let me tell you. It's the funniest thing, man. I can get a freaking buck ten freaking, you know, skinny-ass freaking broad on the table. Don't winch a bit. But leave it to a damn biker to make us all look like pussies. Gosh darn, man, was this guy freaking... Crying up a storm. You know what? Usually would have took me freaking, you know, three, four hours to do this piece. And, you know, it had to be like, what, a six by six piece, you know, full color, all that jive. Turn around, took me all damn day. All damn day. Because <laughs> the dude, every half hour, oh, can I take a smoke break? Oh, this is killing me. Oh, oh, oh. Well, Here's a, <laughs> here's a little suggestion for you guys out there. And, you know, actually, it's a little pointer, especially if you're paying by the hour. The more breaks you take, the more it hurts. Trust me on this. You know, we do these uh, all-day uh, sessions, all-you-can-take shit. And one of the tricks of tattoo artists is... If they didn't want to tattoo a long time, and they're because in all day sessions is okay. Say you pay three fifty, four hundred freaking bucks, and boom. Once you tap out, you tap out. It's done. It's over with. And then you got to pay some more money. So the more breaks you give them, the less you know they can keep going. But this was a paid you know in full piece. I, I swear to God, nothing but crying and freaking whining, man. What the hell, man? Y'all making us look like a bunch of punks. Anyway, uh, I just pulled up an article, and this is about Waco again. And the reason why I talk about it is not only with what the prosecutors did down there, but the situation these people are really in. It's going on almost four years. Four years since this incident. And there's only been the one trial with Carzile and stuff like that. And we covered that in a different video. But they got to work. They got to make a living. You know, a lot of these charges were, you know, as you know, there was only 25, I think, that's uh, left on the charges because everybody else got this dismissal shit. Uh, but they're reworking all the charges. And now they're charging some with riot. It's usually a Class B misdemeanor down in Texas. But now, since there was deaths... They're upgrading it to a felony. So, you, and this is later on in this article, you'll see what this judge says. And I cannot believe this judge upheld the indictment the way it was written by these prosecutors down there. If this is justice, you, you got better off trying to go into Russia or you got a better chance of going to China to get some kind of freaking justice. Because this ain't justice right here. And he even admits it later in the story, and I'll highlight that for you. But... Come on, a riot charge? One of the guys that's been charged, and I, I don't mention names, but I'm real, you know what? I got, I'm close to some of these guys. I talk to them a lot, and it kind of draws you in to understand the whole situation. One of these guys had absolutely nothing to do. They got him on camera doing nothing, but the cops go and say, oh, you know, he was trying to conceal evidence. When it shows right on camera... That that was a bullshit charge. It was a cop that did it. It's on camera. But he still has to go through this. Another one is charged with this riot action. Usually a class B misdemeanor. You know, you're in jail. 
Well, he's got 50 days in right now, so if they put it in, and I think it's 3-1 to one, he told me, if they put in his time he's already served and get him on that, you know, plea him out at that bullshit, you're looking at only two and a half months in jail, but no, these prosecutors want to set him up on this charge that carries up to life imprisonment. <laughs> so, you can actually, in Texas charge somebody with this crime and give them a sentence that you would give for murdering somebody without having to charge them with murders. Tell me what kind of bullshit justice that really is down there. And the guys that are already left, you know, what they're doing is they want to charge some from the Ditos and they want to charge some from the uh, Kazakhs. So it makes it look like, you know, they're trying to do equal justice, which in reality... It's a bullshit case. Now, people died that day. And I understand that 100%. Personally, the cops were freaking there that morning before anybody even showed up. And I, like I've said many times in other videos, here in Chicago and other places, when cops know there's two different clubs that don't get along, they usually turn one away from an event. That happens here all the time in Chicago. If one club shows up and the other club don't like them, it's, they get them down the road. Here, the cops were actually sitting there watching all this shit. They knew about it beforehand that there could be trouble. So why didn't they stop it? Why did nine people, nine people have to die? Why? Has that question ever been asked by the mainstream national press? Where is the national press? The only one on this subject is Tommy Witherspoon out of the Waco Tribune. And damn, Tommy can kick ass, man. He covers this story fairly. He always puts out both sides. And I think that's the reason why that DA's office won't talk to Tommy. But take a look at Tommy Witherspoon's articles. You know, he usually straight on... Does it straight down the middle just like an old school reporter would? So, ask yourself this. Is this justice? As I'm going through this article, is it justice? To me, it's some freaking piece of shit trying to cover his ass because he won the governorship and he thought Waco and the backs of all these people was going to get him there. Well, guess what? Bikers bonded together. And beat his ass in the primary by 20 points. So that's what happens when you stick together as the biker community. You get out there and vote. Vote. Don't sit back, cry and whine about a situation if you're not going to go out there and do something about it. These midterms are the most important there has ever been. Now, for the younger kids out there who didn't have to live through the uh, late 90s, God damn, you get ready for it, man. You know, I remember, you know, and Bill Clinton, you know, yeah, I'm not a fan of the Clintons, but Jesus Christ, all the dude did was get his dick sucked in the Oval Office, and for two years, we had to hear about it over and over and over again. They tried to impeach a guy for getting a blowjob. You believe this bullshit? Come on, really? You know damn well half of them freaking senators and congressmen are out there freaking banging their fucking interns right now. But they tried to impeach him, and the country had to listen to it for two freaking years. Get ready, because if the midterms go down, where the Dems get in it, well, it's a payback. They're going to come back and try to impeach Trump for fucking uh, going out there, messing around with the Playboy model and a porn star. Come on, give me a break, man. Let's be real. For once, everybody be real with themselves. If you're a billionaire, I'm going out there and getting me some from some porn stars and whoever the else I can bang. I don't care if my wife likes it or not. I'm going out there and banging some pussy, man. That's straight up. If I got the money, got the power like Trump did, my ass is out there banging anything. That, I just bang anything that walks at that point. So be real, man. Is it really worth this country getting all screwed up because... The Democrats didn't like the 2016 elections. Think about that. Think about it hard. And think about getting out there and voting and doing something. 
So let's get to this uh, stories here. Uh, the Twin Beaks uh, biker, he's facing a September 10th trial after this judge upholds an indictment, which I cannot understand because later in the article, he asked the very same question I did. So, here we go. And this is from the Waco Tribune, and this is from Tommy. I'm telling you, go look at Tommy's shit, man. He's good. A judge Thursday denied a motion to throw out an indictment against Tom Modesto Mendez and indicted that Mendez should be the second Twin Peaks biker to go to trial in the McAllen County case. After arguing for two hours, only two hours, over language in the first-degree felony riot indictment and the state's theory in the case, prosecutors agreed to amend the language in the indictment 11 days before the scheduled September 10th trial. After the amendments, the judge denied the motion to quash the indictment. So basically, the judge and the prosecutors were working together to get the language in the indictment correct so the trial can go on, where... See, I don't know if everybody understands this in the American justice system. The judge is there as a referee only. They're not, to, they're not there to do this kind of bullshit. They're not there to help the prosecution's case. They're there to freaking be a referee. Plain and simple. Barring the last second motions from Mendez's attorney, Jamie Pena, it appears Mendez will be the second biker charged in May 2015 Twin Peaks melee to stand trial. And you gotta ask yourself again. They're over here calling a melee, and I don't blame Tommy for this. I blame the freaking cops. You guys knew this shit was gonna happen, and you did fucking nothing about it. You could have saved nine people, but instead, you had a freaking shooting gallery going on where your cops killed half of the people involved in this. You're cops. None of this could have happened if you fucking did your jobs. Who in indicated he might file a motion seeking to recuse 19th State District Court Ralph Struther. Declined to say if he will file those motions. You know what? If Struthers was actually a referee and a judge, by doing what he did today, he should fucking just resign. You know what? Recuse himself. You know, because if you truly believe... Lady Justice is blind, which I don't, because I think there's two tier systems, one for the rich, and then the rest of us. That, I'm not even going in anymore. I keep going. If for some reason the Mendez trial is postponed, former Baylor football player Sean Oakman is set for trial as the backup case. One of Mendez's attorneys, Mark Metzger of Galveston, renewed his request Thursday to withdraw from the case. Well, you know, he's from Galveston, and a lot of these lawyers came in from Dallas and San Antonio. They wanted to get in on the action, but see, it's taken too long, and it's starting to eat into their pocketbook, so they want to jump ship and run. Struther asked Mendez and Pena if they objected to Metzger's being allowed to withdraw, and both said they were fine with Metz Metziger, or whatever the hell you say his freaking name, dropping out. However, prosecutor, the prosecutor here now, not the defense trials, not the one in charge of defending the defendant, but the prosecutors, Gay Price said the state objected to Metziger withdrawing, saying he has been on the case for two years and can provide valuable information to the defense. Now that's confusing as shit. Why the hell would the prosecutor want a defense attorney to stay on to provide information to the defense when he's out there trying to get a fucking conviction? That shit does not make any sense. Something's afloat. Also, if he stayed on, it would lessen a potential claim of ineffective assistance of counsel by Mendez on appeal. They've already got this guy convicted. No trial, no nothing, no jury came back. Nah, you know, not guilt or guilty or any bullshit. They already got him fucking convicted. Struthered ordered Metzger to remain part of the defense team, but said he didn't have to attend the trial, which is expected to last about two weeks. Metzger expressed hardships of being away from his family and practice. Yeah, it's hurting your pocketbook, so you should have never took the freaking case in the first place. But that's just my humble opinion. Anyway... 
Pena asked Strutter to quash the indictment against Mendez as unconstitutional for vagueness and overbreath. You're damn right on that one, man. <laughs> but guess what? Pena's motion objected that the language in the new indictment against Mendez issued May 9th did not track the language in the rioting statue. It was Strother who brought up the matter first, saying he had noticed a potential problem while reading the indictment earlier in the week. A two-hour debate ensued, during which prosecutors Price, Robert Mooney, Gabriel Massey, Hillary Labardi, and Stacey Skamen defended the legality of the document by saying they used the, tester, uh, the Texas District and County Attorneys Association charging manual as a guide. So basically, they had to go to the County Attorneys Association charging manual because they had to come up with some charges so they don't look like a bunch of fools for nobody being held accountable that day in Waco. My question is, is there going to be any cops being uh, held liable? Just my, you know what, it's just a question. Really. Uh, a portion of the dispute centered around whether uh, prosecutors improperly substituted the word riot for assembly in the final sentences of paragraphs in the three-paragraph indictment. <laughs> Imagine that. They're playing with the words. It's word monopoly, everybody. Or what? Word scrabble. Let's just pick a word out there. It's just like uh, how Colney said she was uh, horrendously freaking, it wasn't negligent, but she was incompetent or some bullshit like that. So they play with the words. That way they can skew it to the way they want it to go. The indictment charges that Mendez knowingly participated in a riot. An assemblage of seven or more persons resulted in a conduct that created an immediate danger of damage to property and or injury to person. Well, I don't think he, you know, knowingly participated when you got gunshots coming at you, you got fists being thrown at you. I don't think you knowingly participate. What I think you do is knowingly defend your fucking ass. Because who wouldn't defend themselves in them kind of situations? Especially when they didn't have to happen, you damn PD. Quote, the defendant discharged a firearm repeatedly, and while engaged in said riot, one of those persons engaged in the riot, namely Glenn Walker, committed the offense of murder, and said offense should have been anticipated as a result of said assembly. Or said offense was committed in the furtherance of the purpose of the riot, the indictment states. So, now they're saying he discharged a firearm. If this is the case, it's still self-defense. Because you got others fucking firing at you. You gotta see who started the whole fucking thing. When it started, they know all this. They got all the damn camera footage. Whoever fucking started throwing the shit... You know what? Start looking at them instead of everybody else. Really, man. Because somebody coming after me, I'm going to pull my 9mm out of my goddamn back uh, pocket and I'm going to start blazing motherfuckers, man. That's why I carry this shit. Anybody who carries a gun's going to use it if somebody's coming at them. This is just insane. Pena and Struther noted that the statue uses the word riot again instead of assembly for the last word in the paragraph. The other two paragraphs are identical, except they name others who reportedly committed murder, Richard Cantu and Jacob Ryan during the riot. Because nine people were killed in the incident, Mendez is charged with riot resulting in death. That bumps riot, normally a class B misdemeanor, up to first degree felony, punishable by life in prison. Now, this is my life in prison. Now, you don't have to commit murder, but you can be charged with the shit. And if you're found guilty, you can get up to life imprisonment for a riot charge down in Texas, I guess. So, here's what I was talking about earlier. Here's what the judge says. And if he's saying this kind of shit, how to, 
this is telling you he worked with the prosecutors instead of being the referee to restructure the indictment so he can get this trial going. But listen to what he says. What troubles me is that you are trying to convict him of murder without charging him with murder, Strother said. Does it bother anybody that you are taking what usually is a Class B misdemeanor and making it where someone is facing life in prison? So, if he truly believed in what he was just saying, why the hell did he accept the indictment and why the hell did he help the prosecutors rewrite the whole fucking thing? That's, that don't, that's no common sense at all, is it? That's just my opinion, but come on, give me a break. Let me know in the comment sections what you're thinking. Struthers asked pros is prosecutors are prepared to move beyond a reasonable doubt that Walker, now get that, reasonable doubt, Cantu and Ryan committed murder while trying to prove Mendez guilty of riot. They said yes. Pena expressed concern that he also will have to defend the murder allegations and that the burden of proof would shift to the defense. It's not supposed to be that way. The burden of proof is supposed to be on the prosecution in criminal cases. The prosecution the team asserted the judge that they are well within the statutes in charge of the case. Price complained that the focus of pretrial hearing was getting off in the weeds. Saying Pena's arguments and the judge's concerns were more appropriate for post-trial matters, not pre-trial matters. This case has been off in the weeds for three and a half years now, the judge said. So, that's our justice system right there. You can't argue anything that would sway the jury or even bring the case to court. You have to wait until post-trial. So, say this dude gets convicted... Now he's going to have to sit, you know, he's probably going to get, you know, because these assholes are going to go for life. So he'll, he'll, the judge is probably going to give him a 40, 50 year fucking sentence if he gets convicted. So now he has to sit in the jail cell looking at that type of time, hoping that he wins on appeal. That's just freaking craziness, man. That really is. How crazy is this system? And as everybody knows, Texas some bullshit, man. When it comes to the death penalty, it's like the wild freaking west down in Texas, man. And like I said in previous videos, Chicago Democratic Machine don't have shit on Texas, boy. It's all boss hog down in that motherfucker, man. It's Roscoe Pico shit down there. So, guys, don't ever get freaking arrested down in Texas, man. Don't. It's some strange shit down in that motherfucker. But anyway... There's more news and stuff like that, but the video's running a little, you know, late, and I don't want to keep you eyes all on and shit like that, but, uh, yeah, so let's, you know what, get this case out there. Everybody start talking about it, because it's something that could affect us, all of us, man. The overreach of the law is just unreal. This is, this is like a fucking nightmare. For everybody I'm, I know that's being charged, the guys I've been talking to, it's a nightmare. They got families, man. You know what happened? That day was simple. The cops knew about it. They should have stopped it. They didn't. They let it happen. And now they got to cover their freaking asses because it did happen. Yeah, people were killed. Two clubs got in the fucking beef. Yeah, there's responsibility on both clubs. But the way I'm looking at it, it was the responsibility of PD to not let this shit happen. They had text and they had fucking inside information that there's going to be trouble. And they had an obligation to make sure this shit didn't happen. They're the ones who failed. Yeah, if you find people that are actually freaking guilty and you got them on camera doing some shit... First, you got to get past the self-defense fucking, uh, you know, position. Because at that point, anybody in a fucking riot is going to be self-defense. Because who the hell wants to get a beat down? Who else wants to get shot? No, you're going to defend yourself in this shit. So, the criminally ones that should be out there is the cops. So, 
with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this show. I know it is a little longer today. Uh, the new book is back on the shelves. So, yeah, there she is. That was a proof one right there. But uh, it's back on the shelves. Uh, if you want to get it, you can get it on Amazon. Or you can get it digitally, uh, the ebook form. And I know I, I got to get some of these out, the ebook ones, but I've been real busy today and shit, so I'm hoping to catch up this weekend. So I appreciate all the orders and shit like that. It's gone beyond my um, you know wildest dreams of how many of these are gone. Uh, and I thank you guys for that. Without you guys, there is no throttle. You know, Insane Throttle has the best in its community. Best people, best bikers, you know. We have great ideals and debates going on, and that's what the biker community is supposed to be. So with that, if you're going to the 115th, you guys be careful. It's supposed to pour up here. Uh, if you're going out to any other kind of parties, make sure you party hard. Keep the throttle fucking cracked wide open, and make sure you get home safe. So with that, I'll talk to you guys later.